Part one of making a belt buckle on my CNC machine. Welcome to another episode. So in this episode, I'm gonna use my CNC machine here to create a belt buckle for my friend, my son's friend, uh, Quincy. And as you'll see, it has a cue on it and it's curved and I kind of went a little bit overboard. He sent me a file that would have been much easier to make on this machine, but you know, I wanted to see how far I could push this. So what I'm gonna do is take you to the computer and I'm gonna show you the process of uh, in Fusion 360, you know, redesigning the belt buckle and then working on the back of the belt buckle for the pin plus the part that holds the belt itself. And I'm going to use the 3D printer as well to get the fit just right before milling it on the milling machine. This episode is part one of two because I don't have time to finish this project this weekend. I have some injection molding and laser cutting I have to do this weekend. So let's head to the computer and I'll show you where I started. This is the file that Quincy sent me and you can see it's pretty simple. The opening in the back is because his plan was to use epoxy to glue in a pin and a clip or a, a loop for the belt itself. On the back of the buckle I need a, uh, a hook as well as a loop and I found these uh, or this uh, basically is, is one thing that I purchased. It was about five dollars uh, from Amazon and it screws to the back of a belt buckle to give you a loop to which you attach the belt and then a hook that will hook into a hole in the belt. So what I want to do is uh, model the shape and then subtract it from the back of the aluminum belt buckle so I can mill out a pocket for this. When I looked at this I noticed that the back was curved. So the first thing that I want to do is to see if I can figure out what the radius is. So I'll put this down here and then I'm going to trace what looks like uh, the approximate uh, curvature. And it's, it's fairly approximate, it's not accurate at all because it's kind of hard to get the angle there. And then I have a six inch scale, uh, hoping that the radius is about six inches. And so if I put this on here and figure out the approximate uh, center point, you can see it's actually really close to six inches. So I'm going to head to the computer now and model this up in the computer and use six inches as the starting radius uh, for this curve here. I want to create a uh, sketch of this part with some dimensions. So the first thing I'm going to do is put this down here like so and just draw an outline around it. Uh, doing it this way is you know, faster than drawing a sketch. It's actually pretty fast. And this doesn't have to be accurate because I'm going to be turning this into a drawing in Fusion 360. I just want to get an idea. So I'm going to start with this dimension here. There are also a few holes. Let's see, there's a hole there, a hole there, and a hole there. So I'm going to use the points to get a rough idea of the diameter. 1.36.136. So this diameter is 0.136. And uh, then I'm going to measure, let's see, the distance between these two holes. And this is definitely approximate. It is about 0.54, I'll call it. And this should be enough to get me started. And then I'm going to create 
one sketch, which is basically the overhead view of it, and then I'm going to create a second sketch, which is the side view. And you'll see why I do both of those uh, once I finish them. I'm basically going to extrude and then intersect to get the final shape. So if I look at the overhead, let me start with the circle. So I'll put the circle in the center, and I want to switch to inches because that's what I use for all my dimensions. And this is 0.97 inches. Then I have a rectangle, which is over here. What I want to do is I want to make it uh, so it's uh, horizontal. So I'm going to make it a construction line, go like that, and then I can make this horizontal. And now those two line up. So then I can add a dimension here, which is 1.074. And then the other dimension was 0.6. I did not measure the distance between the rectangle and the circle. I'll figure that out in a little minute. But what I do have is we have a hole here. So I'll draw a circle there. And the diameter of that hole came out to be 0.13. I also want that to be horizontal with the origin right there. Then I'll draw another circle. You can see I'm, I'm kind of thinking things through as I go. So I'll just put it on there so it's along the center line. And then I'm going to make these two equal. And I know that the distance between these is 0.5. And I can tell already I'll need to move this over a little bit, but I'll figure out the exact dimensions in a little bit. The picture, and so that means this is actually kind of over like this. And I'm going to have to take a few other dimensions to figure out what's going on. So the first dimension I want is basically what is the distance from here to here. And I'm going to zoom in. And so I'm going to measure that. And it comes out to 0.1. So I'll create a construction line that's vertical. And then connect these with a tangent. And now I can set this to 0.1. So I have that dimension correct. So that's pretty close to what we have for the top view. And so I'll go ahead and finish that sketch. The next thing I want to do is the side view. All right, so at this point, I have two sketches. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead to this first sketch. And you know, now that I realize that I realize what I should have done, uh, which I always like to do is start by creating a component. Um, so I'll call this back hook. And then I'll move forward one, grab this sketch and move it down to there. And then now both sketches are down there. So now when I build this part, it'll be part of this component. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to extrude this right here. Okay, and I'm going to extrude it down so that, you know, it's covered by that. And it doesn't really matter how far extrude it. Uh, I could constrain it. I'm just going to leave it at that. So I'll say go ahead and create a new body. Now I'm going to do another extrude of this guy. There we go. It already selected it. And I want to make this symmetric, like so. And then I want the distance to be all. And I want this to be a new body because actually, let me do intersect. And this will give us the part that we're looking for, like so. 
after what I showed you before, I made some changes. The most important one is I realized that this straight line here is uh, farther up than I had in the previous sketch. And I also decided I wanted to model this so I had a better view of things. The next thing I'm going to do after saving this is to go over to the belt buckle that I have so far and pull this in as well. So I'm going to say insert derive and then select this and I want to select the component because when I select the component it means that I can uh, do some moving and aligning etc. So you can see the, the component fits in here without any problems. I did a lot more work on the belt buckle since the last time you saw it. I curved the, the front and the back and then I used uh, alignment. You can see I have a joint here to put this part into the back. And let me show you that joint because there's actually something I did. Um, so the, the joint itself is a fairly straightforward joint. It's uh, basically I set the, the Z angle to get it rotated this way and then I set the, the various offsets here. But the other thing that I did, let's see if I go here, you can see that I set uh, edit limits and this is controlling the rotation because it didn't fit uh, flat. I needed to adjust it so it would uh, sit in the curve a little bit better. And so if I cancel this and then hide the, the back hook assembly and the joint, you can see that this is what I'm aiming toward in terms of the buckle that I'm going to mill out of a solid piece of aluminum. Now, for testing, one of the things I've done is to create a cross section of this so that I can uh, try the fit and I'm going to show you uh, several different attempts that I made uh, for a cross section to try it out and do iterations to get it closer. I 3D printed a test piece so that I could see how this, uh, the back fit into the, uh, the test piece before milling this out of aluminum. And the first thing that I noticed is that uh, this, I need to, to give it a little bit more clearance in several different areas. One of them is around the circle, the other one is over here because it doesn't really fit flat in here. So as you can see, it took a few tries to get the, the fit the way that I wanted. Uh, one of the things I did is I numbered these so I could keep track uh, to make sure that I was going in the right direction. And I started out with something that uh, fit the whole uh, back piece. And you can see that, you know, it doesn't fit very well. But there, there are a couple problems with uh, printing a whole piece like this. So I switched to, after the second one, I switched to something that was a lot shorter. And one of the advantages of switching to something a lot shorter is I can look at the sides and I can see where there are gaps or where it doesn't fit and that sort of thing. And the other thing is it prints out a lot faster on my 3D printer. This will print in about 15 minutes. Whereas this, I don't remember how long it was, but it was definitely longer than 15 minutes. So I went through a bunch of tests until I got to number eight here. And with number eight, it fit really well in that section there. So then what I wanted to do is I wanted to switch to making sure that this uh, would fit in uh, correctly. Because one of the things that I discovered when I put it, the clip on is that uh, it was actually binding. So I needed to relieve this a little bit. And because I needed to relieve it, I printed out the section that just had the part I needed to check. So let me do it this way. So this was the next one I printed. And uh, actually, that's the most recent one. So nine was the next one I printed. And if we try nine here, you can see it's a little tight. It doesn't move freely, it gets stuck in a few places. So I made the pocket that I added here a little bit deeper. And number 10 was the final version that is nice and loose, but not too loose. 
and this should be perfect. So I'm ready to go back to the computer and work on the cam for milling this out of aluminum to make the final belt buckle. I won't bore you with all the details of the cam, but I will show you a few things. So the first is the adaptive clearing. I'm using a quarter inch end mill and I took this pretty conservative because I didn't want the end mill to pull out and I wasn't concerned about how long it would take to make this. Next thing is a contour to make the outside smooth. I can't do the contour on these walls here because they're curved uh, or the Z is curved. Then I used a 1 8 inch ball end mill to give me this nice smooth surfaces. And I set this step over so that I would have a cusp of about 3 tenths, 3 ten thousandths of an inch. This is cleaning up the vertical walls on the Q, which is using a contour. Let me make this a little wider. And then another contour to with a smaller end mill to clean up those spaces here. The final thing is, you'll notice that I added a uh, fillets on here and here. I don't have fillets down here. And the reason I don't have fillets down here is because I discovered I could use a pencil toolpath with a ball end mill to effectively get the fillets there. And so the way that worked is over here, I selected the faces. So you want to select the, the bottom face as well as the wall faces. And I did that both on the inside and the outside. And that allowed me to run a toolpath. The other thing I did is I said uh, number of stepovers to seven with a 5,000 stepover. That's definitely more stepovers than I needed. I definitely could adjust this to make the milling time a lot shorter. It's, are these the um, instructions for where it goes from here to here to there? That sort of thing? Yeah. Each one is a teeny tiny step? Yep. Wow. And so when it goes fast, it's probably going in a line or something? Like no, it's going around the corner. Oh! No, it, this is a straight line across the back. Oh, right. It doesn't move. Right. And then, oops, corner! Yep. <laughs> That's cool! You'll hear it uh, right when it's in the center here and it'll start cut, cutting briefly. Oh, yeah! Uh, and you can see it's starting to create the... Uh, oh, I see! The oval! Yeah. Does it do it on the other side? It will at some point. There it is! That's cool! And then on the side, it will do it at some point soon as well. I see. Oh, that's so cool! I want one. No. <laughs> oh, that's the cube. The little thing on the top of the cube. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and you can see it's starting to uh, yeah. clean up because the inside of the key. Yeah. What's so cool? It keeps moving so quickly. Oh, that's cool. I've never actually seen this thing running before. Pretty nice. Uh, you can feel the pattern on there, but it's actually kind of cool. The part turned out quite nice. You can see there are some marks there from the 1 8 inch diameter ball end mill, 
But according to the calculations I did, it's the, the cusp is uh, three ten thousandths of an inch. So if I wanted to sandblast it, I could get rid of it. You can also see some indications there that I probably didn't set the tolerances quite tightly enough. So uh, you can see what looks like kind of flat spots, but you have to look at it in just the right light. Um, well, now you can see it pretty well. But again, if I were to sandblast that, that would get rid of it. The next step, which is going to be in the next episode, is going to be to cut the back. And the pocket for the, the belt loop, as well as the pin that goes into the belt. I don't have time to do that uh, work this weekend because I have some injection molding and laser cutting that I have to do. So I'm going to finish here and then continue uh, next weekend where I create the soft jaws and then cut the back and finish this. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Please subscribe, give me a thumbs up, comment below, and I'll see you next time.